How are you doing? Uh, I'm Neil Barton and I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I've had asylum for 10 years and I've worked for Goldwell for the same amount of time. Um, I won Colour Zoom 10 years ago and um, off the back of that I've been travelling the world doing seminars and doing lots of photo shoots. Um, so today what I'm going to show you is in um, last year's Colour Zoom collection, one of my favourite cuts, it's the Feet Cut and it's a 70s inspired bowl cut. Um, but what we're going to do is then um, use a rounded disconnection and um, we're going to, I was really inspired by Jane Fonda in the 70s, how she had this uh, scoop underneath. So my disconnected section underneath is going to be a scoop. So I'm really going to show you how to elevate the hair. Okay, so I'll just get started. And you've got Courtney from Hairbrained behind the camera, you guys. If you have any questions, please let us know. I know it's a little bit early there in the States. We are currently in Berlin. Yeah, so we're in Berlin actually working on the trends for 2021, um, which is really exciting. Uh, we've got a really good team this year. We've had uh, people from America and Asia and Russia. Uh, so it's been really exciting to meet um, some of my friends again. And do you typically cut your haircuts wet in the salon or dry? Uh, it just depends on the look I'm trying to create. Um, but just for this cut, I thought it would be uh, nicer just to show you how to cut it wet. And um, just because my, I like to uh, work with the hair better that way. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to start at the back if you'd like to come around. Um, I'm going to split the back section into three sections. So I've got a middle and two sides. And what I love about this cut, it's really simple. So all I'm going to do is elevate the hair up to the part of the disconnection. And this is a really old 70s technique. Okay, so we lift up to the line of the part and then I get my fingers in the hair and bend my fingers under. So we've got two fingers elevation. And then what I'm going to do is point cut just a line. And you'll see the effect that this gives you. So it gives you a really nice scoop and a flick. So if you just think of Mrs. Brady and the Brady Bunch from the 70s. Absolutely. Okay, so when you comb this down, see how it really gives you that nice rounded shape. And then it keeps all the length. So we've cut this quite short underneath. Okay, so if you're so soon trained, you might want to do this in a lot of sections. But what I love about this technique is just really nice, quick and simple and commercial for the salon. And we do have, we've got a lot of people joining us. We've got some people tuning in from Hong Kong and South Africa right now. Oh, wow. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> and for those just joining us, Neil, where are you from? I, I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland. Originally, I was born in South Africa, but I've lived in Scotland most of my life. Okay, so again, I'm just working on the side of the back. Again, elevation to the part. Okay, and then I'm going to bend my fingers under and then just point cut this line. So the reason why I'm bending my fingers is I really want to create this rounded shape. And again, just comb it down. Let's see, and we've got Mary Ann tuning in from Buffalo, New York. I know it's pretty early there, so thanks for joining wow. us. So if anyone's got any questions, feel free to sit by on. And just do this side. And you're left-handed, which is really exciting for our hairbrained audience. We don't we don't have a lot of you on our channels so often. Yeah, I'm actually left-handed, but I actually cut with my right hand. I color with my left hand. Ah. Uh, it's just easier for training when I was younger. So I can kind of use both hands. Can you cut it all with your left hand? Uh, I can, but um, I prefer to use my right hand for cutting just because I was trained that way. So now I'm going to work on the sides. And what I really love about the effect on the sides, it's going to cut the side shorter. Let's see, Laura's asking, when you're doing your sectioning, are you taking a little bit of reference for a previously cut section? Uh, yes, so my first section is going to be my guideline. So when I elevate the hair up to the part, this is my guide. So the short layer is going to be the same all the way around. Perfect. And the guideline is how much I elevate the hair and how many fingers are away from the head. So I've got one, two, three fingers elevation.
Right, so now when you comb this down, see how it's cut the side shorter. So this could even be a mullet as well if you, uh, if you weren't using this disconnected section. But what I love about it, it feathers the hair at the same time and just gives you quite a modern feel. So again, just the same again on this side. Three fingers elevation. So when I first trained to cut hair, uh, you were asking whether a dry haircut or I use uh, wet hair. I was trained to dry cut because um, uh, when I was trained, um, the clients used to... So we come around here. So again, I'm pulling all the hair into one section and then starting at the bottom, just working my way up. Again, this is a really quick. Undercut and then I'm working on rounded shapes on top. So it's kind of two different haircuts in one. So again, I'm just going to over direct the hair to the sides. So you get this nice rounded shape. So I'm going to comb this down now. I'm going to take this point away. Those layers are coming in beautifully. Yeah. Right, so now I'm going to work on the sides and I'm going to take a diagonal back section and then push the hair forward and cut the hair from the eyelid down just to create this rounded bowl shape. And when you're in the salon doing a haircut, how often do you, how do you typically book? On the hour? Uh, I cut hair every 45 minutes. And I've got a cut and colour hair, but I've also got um, two colourists that colour for me, so we're always working back to back. So I can cut hair really fast as well at the same time. And Brenda's asking, how would you tackle this cut if you wanted to leave length in the sides? If you wanted to leave so you would elevate the hair even more and maybe have more fingers elevation from the part. Perfect, thank you. Again, just working from the eye and just creating this rounded bow shape. So it's going to be a bow shape with a sort of flick underneath. And what type of hair trends are you seeing right now in Scotland in your salon uh, in terms well, of cutting? Actually, I've just been discussing this because a lot of clients are seem to be going for the pixie crop again. Uh, for a while it's been really long soft layers so younger girls like to have a uh, longer hair and um, maybe not so many layers um, but i've got a lot of clients now that have decided to go totally the other way um, and they've been going for real pixie crops and making a statement so it's not like mia faro right so that's underneath done i'm going to drop this top section down i'm going to split it in two blend this back section into the line that I've created underneath, okay? So again, I'm just going to work with the shape that's already there. Okay. 
And Crystal's just joining us and asking, what style cut are you doing? Uh, I'm doing a 70s inspired bowl cut, but the disconnection actually has this scoopy, flicky shape underneath as well, just to make it slightly more contemporary. And this is from a, inspired by also a previous Goldwell collection. Yeah, so this is inspired by last year's Intrepid collection. So it's kind of a cross between uh, 1970s and a grunge feel as well. And I know we're currently in Berlin and you're from Scotland. So what does the title International Artist for Goldwell what does that mean for you as an artist? Well, for me as an artist, um, I travel quite a lot around Europe and Russia and even so far as America. Um, so for me, it's all about education and um, doing seminars um, and also working on campaign trips for Goldwell. And how long have you been an international artist? Uh, about 10 years. So I've done it for quite a while. Uh, before I started hairdressing, I've done a degree in art as well, so I've got oh, wow. an art background. So I love creating my own collections as well. So, I'm going to work on the front area, and I'm taking diagonal back sections. I'm just combing the hair down to natural fall. And I'm going to take a central section in the middle and just get the length where I want the fringe to start. So for this bow shape, I want to kind of work uh, on the bridge of the nose here. And again, I want to point cut the hair. I'm not cutting blunt and structured just because I just want to have a little bit more of that raw undone feel. And could you cut this look blunt? Yeah, definitely you, you could. could cut this blunt as well. Right, so what I'm going to do now is comb the hair onto my hand like it's paper. And then from the bottom, I'm going to work my way up here. So I'm just going to continue with diagonal back sections, just combing the hair forward until I run out of hair. And what type of shear length do you prefer for this cut? What kind of type of? Shear length? Uh, I use a uh, six inch scissors, uh, but I actually use hundreds and hundreds of scissors. So I always buy a new pair because uh, I don't like to get them sharpened. I like to just get a new pair. So I use Joelle Classic Scissors. Um, let's see, we have Alex joining us from Fort Lauderdale. Good uh -huh. morning, Alex. We know it's early there. Um, and we have two people, Elizabeth and Crystal, are asking what type of um, face shape would you suggest this hairstyle on? Uh, this could work on various uh, face shapes. But I think uh, it depends on the lengths that you use as well. I'm one of these people that if... Um, a haircut doesn't suit a face shape, I can tailor it to suit instead. And speaking of tailoring, Crystal's asking, could you do this cut with any type of hair? Uh, yeah, it would actually look really nice on curly hair as well, because uh, you would get a really nice bowl cut uh, shape as well. That would be really nice. And it depends on how you cut hair. And if you did this cut on curly hair, would you do the same sectioning pattern? Uh, yeah, I would do the same sectioning pattern, but I might do sort of surface layers, just working on the round of the head as well. That would maybe keep a little bit more weight towards the front. Perfect. But I would like, uh, if it was curly hair, I would be like more curl I would work with rather than using tongs or curling irons. That could also flick out very nice as well. is comb the hair down to the sides and then I'm just going to link the front into the back of the haircut. So this bowl shape on top is longer than what uh, I've actually done underneath. So it's just going to give it a little bit more of an airy feel.
And just so everybody knows, we're not going to blow dry on camera, mm -hmm. but we will blow dry off camera and post the final photo in the comment section for you all. And Neil, where can everybody find you on Instagram? Uh, they can go on to Neil Barton Hair, so that's uh, basically more about my travels and all the seminars I do. But you could also go on Neil Barton Salons as well, and you can get to see what my team do as well. So I've got quite a young team. Um, when I opened up 10 years ago, um, my business plan was um, to train people from scratch. So I've got 10 stylists, but none of them have ever had another job. They've only ever worked for me, and I've trained them from the very beginning. So what I'm going to do just now is a central vertical section. Then I'm going to cut onto the round of the head. So as you can see, this is going to be what the layers are underneath. I'm going to work on a diagonal. Just decide what length I want to go. Just so I can expose a little bit more of this underneath. Okay, and then I'm going to use over direction. So also, um, I live in Spain as well. And when you're educating, do you share all of that on your Instagram? Yep. Don't put any personal things on Instagram. It's all. Uh, and what is it you're doing right now? What are you looking for? Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just layering the top section, just round the front, uh, but I'm still keeping it slightly heavier towards the front and using over direction. Okay, so that's the cut finished for just now. What I'm going to do is dry it off, and then once it's dry, I'm going to personalize the cut even more, okay? Perfect. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. No problem. Thank you.